An anonymous cardinal who's identifying himself as Demos II, I'll explain what that means in just a minute, has written a document that is against the tyrannical reign of Pope Francis. Now, you'll remember a couple years back, we had an anonymous document by Demos, and it turned out to be Cardinal Pell, who died suddenly uh, after a hip surgery in Rome. So it, Demos II, whoever this cardinal is, is not Cardinal Pell, because Cardinal Pell has gone to his reward. We now have a second cardinal taking on the pen name of Demos II and criticizing Pope Francis. So today we're going to look at that document. There's seven points in it, and I'm going to go through all seven with you. Here is the document translated into English. I'm from reading here from Daily Compass. And let's jump into it. By the way, before I get started, uh, the Fraternity of St. Peter did meet with Pope Francis yesterday. People were worried about it. Apparently, nothing happened. However, I have heard from a good source that the topic of con celebration during Holy Week was brought up. I don't know if there's going to be any follow-up on that or if there's a requirement that priests of the Fraternity of St. Peter participate in Chrism Mass during Holy Week. It is a contentious issue, both in the Institute of Christ the King and in the Fraternity of St. Peter. I guess we'll wait and see what happens during Holy Week, which is just, what, three weeks away. All right, back into Demas II. This is an open letter. Cardinal Pell wrote Demas, I guess you could call it Demas the First, First Demas, and it was called The Vatican Today. And this document is called The Vatican Tomorrow. And the original Demas by Cardinal Pell came out in March 2022. Pell died less than a year later. Some people thought foul play. We did explore it here on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. I encourage you to read it all. But there is concern about the pontificate. There are shortcomings that he says that are obvious. And then he jumps into practical observations for what's going to happen next. All right. So here I am right here at first. Okay. First, real authority is damaged by authoritarian means in its exercise. The Pope is a successor of Peter and the guarantor of church unity, but he is not an autocrat says Demas II. He cannot change doctrine and he must not invent or alter the church's discipline arbitrarily. He governs the church collegially with his brother bishops and local dioceses, and he does so always in faithful continuity with the word of God and church teaching. New paradigms and unexplored new paths that deviate from either are not of God. A new pope must restore the hermeneutic of continuity in Catholic life and reassert Vatican II's understanding of the papacy's proper role. Here we see that whoever Demas II is, this cardinal, they are on board with Vatican II and the hermeneutic of continuity. What does this sound like? Leave a comment below if you know. If you're in the live chat, what does this sound like? Who is pro-Vatican II and hermeneutic of continuity? Ratzinger, Bennett the Sixteenth. So, this cardinal is a Ratzinger cardinal, presumably. He is a Pope Benedict cardinal. After reading this, I have very strong conclusion of who this is, who this cardinal is. And if you're watching in the live right now, or if you're watching on Twitter, or you're watching on Rumble or Facebook, YouTube, leave a comment. Or in the live chat, leave a comment. Who do you think this cardinal is? I think this first paragraph reveals who it is. All right. Secondly, just as the church is not an autocracy, neither is it a democracy. The church belongs to Jesus Christ, says Demos II. She is his church. She is Christ's mystical body made up of many members. We have no authority to refashion her teachings to fit more comfortably with the world. Moreover, the Catholic census fidelium is not a matter of opinion, surveys, or even the view of a baptized majority. It derives from those who genuinely believe and 
actively practice or at least sincerely seek to practice the faith and teachings of the church. This seems to be a knock against the synodality approach that Francis is trying to popularize in the church. It's not a democracy. We don't get to vote. You know, well, 51% of Catholics want women priests. Therefore, we get it. Nope. It's the kingdom of God, not the republic of God, not the democracy of God. And the Pope is the vicar of Christ. He's not the king of Christ. Christ is king. Viva Cristo Rey. The Pope is the steward. All right, back into it. Moving on to the third criticism made by the anonymous mystery cardinal, who I think I know who it is. I want to hear who y'all think it is. His third point, ambiguity is neither evangelical nor welcoming. Rather, it breeds doubt and feeds schismatic impulses. The church is a community, not just of word and sacrament, but also of creed. What we believe helps to define and sustain us. Thus, doctrinal issues are not burdens imposed by unfeeling doctors of the law, nor are they cerebral sideshows to the Christian life. On the contrary, they're vital to living a Christian life authentically because they deal with the applications of the truth and the truth demands clarity. Amen. Not ambivalent nuance. Boy, we have been getting a lot of ambivalent nuance lately. From the start, the current pontificate has resisted the evangelical force and intellectual clarity of its immediate successors, the dismantling and repurposing of Rome's John Paul II Institute for Studies on Marriage and Family, and the margil- mar- marginalizing, marginalizing sorry, of the texts like Veritatis Splendor suggest an elevation of compassion and emotion at the expense of reason, justice, and truth. For a creedal community, this is both unhealthy and profoundly dangerous. So we see that this synonymous cardinal, cardinal is also pro JP two, and uh, you know I I like this. I would just if I were the editor here or I was making suggestions, I would the very last sentence puts puts me on alert. It says for a creedal community, this is both unhealthy unhealthy and profoundly dangerous. Can we stop saying stuff like a creedal community? Can we just say the Catholic church, the body of Christ, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, like creedal community. Like there's a Catholic church down the street from here and they're a Catholic community. Can we just go back to like the words that we're supposed to use as Catholics? Anyway, I mean, this is a great document. I just wish that we could kind of get away from these warm fuzzies. And, And maybe there's just some some, um, I don't know, accommodation to, to the fuzziness or ambiguities. But like, if we're going to not have ambiguity, let's not have any ambiguity. Like it's not a, a creedal community. No, the Catholic church. Fourth, here we go. The Catholic church. In addition to word sacrament and creed is also a community of law. Canon law orders church life, harmonizes institutions, procedures, and guarantees the right of believers. Among the marks of the current pontificate are its excessive reliance on the motu proprio as a tool for governance and a general carelessness and distaste for canonical detail. Again, as with ambiguity of doctrine, disregard for canon law and proper canonical procedures undermines confidence in the purity of the church's mission. This is true. The motu proprio is like in America, it's similar to, not exactly, an executive order. It's just sort of a fiat, right? Motu proprio means in Latin, by his own movement, by his own proper movement. Movement of the pen. So let it be written, so let it be done. Nothing wrong with the with the motu proprio, but it's just sort of rapid fire motu proprios. Fifth of the seventh, the church as John twenty third is beautiful. The church as John the third so beautifully described her is mater et magistra, the mother and teacher of humanity, not its dutiful follower. Here again, Demas the second is peppering, sprinkling onto his document devotion to so far Benedict Ratzinger, 
John Paul II, and now John the Twenty Third. John the Twenty Third did not come up with the church the name of the church as Mater et Magister. I believe it's even inscribed on the front of Saint John Lateran. Um, Rome for centuries, if not over a thousand years, has been described as Mater et Magistra, the mother and teacher of the faithful. But here we're giving credit to John the 23rd. I don't know why, maybe just to kind of keep everything Vatican II-ish. But the point stands, the church is supposed to teach and mother humanity, not follow whatever the topic du jour is, globalism, human sexuality, unnatural sexuality. You know, the the church is not supposed to be responsive to whatever humanity's cooking up. The church is supposed to be the teacher, the organizer. Jesus said, go out into all the world, teaching them all that I have commanded, not, you know, playing pickleball over the net back and forth. What do you guys think about homosexuality. Well, we think this. Well, what if we thought about this? And it's just like this, you know, pickleball match between whatever the EU is saying or the UN or Joe Biden or certain, you know, political organizations. That's not what Christ taught in Matthew 28. He taught, go out teaching them all that I have commanded you. We also have here uh, one of the key flaws in the current pontificate is its retreat from the convincing theology of the body and its lack of compelling Christian anthropology. So again, this anonymous cardinal is tipping the hat to John Paul II and theology of the body. As a traditional Catholic, I do have some very serious concerns about the theology of the body as issued by John Paul II. Today's not that podcast. If you want to learn more about that, subscribe to the channel. This is the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast, and make sure you like the video. Point six. This is a good, I really, Demos II, Cardinal, whoever you are, I really like your point six. Global travel served a pastor like John Paul II so well because of his unique personal gifts and the nature of the times, but the times and circumstances have changed. The church in Italy and throughout Europe, the historic home of faith, is in crisis. The Vatican itself urgently needs a renewal of its morale, a cleansing of institutions, procedures, and personnel, and a thorough reform of its finances to prepare for a more challenging future. These are not small things. They demand the presence, direct attention, and personal engagement of any new pope. Father Murr and I talked about this two weeks ago. You know, John Paul II was all over the world, and here Demas II said it served JP II well. I'm not so sure about that. You know, John Paul II making however many dozens of international trips is very much like the successful father, the businessman who is always on business trips. He's to New York, Tokyo, Hong Kong, L.A. He's all over the place and he's making the deals and he's prospering and he's extending the family finances. But at what cost? The kids back home miss their dad. Things are a muck back home, but dad doesn't see it because dad's on a business trip to Tokyo. And you might say, well, what are you talking about? And you look at under John Paul II, you have the appointment of and the advancement of Marcel, uh, Marcel Maciel, the legionaries of Christ, McCarrick. You could throw in there Bogolio. Bad bishop appointments, bad cardinal appointments, bad promotion of the legionaries of Christ. Lots of things happen in the 80s and the 90s under the nose of John Paul II. And you may or may not blame him for that. But if he's out all over the world, he doesn't know. Maybe he does know. I don't know. But I would like to give him the benefit of doubt. He doesn't understand that while, how's it go? How's it go? While the while the while the cat's away, the mice shall play. So that's a problem. And yes, the Pope should be in Rome. The Pope should not be constantly traveling around the world. He is governing from the capital, which is Rome. He needs to be in Rome. He needs to be looking over his personnel. 
to make sure they're properly living and and extending the gospel of Jesus Christ. Seventh and finally, the College of Cardinals exists to provide senior counsel to the Pope and to elect his successor upon his death. That service requires men of clean character, strong theological formation, mature leadership experience, and personal holiness. It also requires a Pope willing to seek advice and then to listen. It's unclear to what degree this applies to Pope Francis in the Pope Francis pontificate. Again, Demas II is critical of the Pope Francis pontificate. The current pontificate has placed an emphasis on diversity in the college, but it has failed to bring cardinals together in regular consistories designed to foster genuine collegiality and trust amongst brothers. Remember, you can read this in my book, The Eternal City. The College of Cardinals is akin to the 70 counselors of Moses. Moses was having difficulty governing Israel. He went to his father-in-law and says, man, this is a hard job. And he said, you know what? You need to appoint men you trust to advise you and to help you in your judgments. And historically, the Catholic Church has seen the cardinal, the, the College of Cardinals as like that governing college of judges helping Moses prophetically. It's also akin to the apostolic college, those closest to Peter, helping him govern the church. So that's how we understand the college cards. It's not, they're not just there to elect the new Pope. They also have an advisory role. They're not above the Pope. The Pope doesn't have to do what they advise, but he would be prudent according to the virtues to seek counsel, as it says in the book of Proverbs. Well, first of all, to appoint wise, prudent, godly men to the College of Cardinals, and then to seek their advice. He goes on to say, today's College of Cardinals should be, a pro, should be proactive about getting to know each other to better understand the particular views regarding the church, their local church situations, and their personalities, which impact their consideration of the next pope. This is a criticism of Francis because he sort of kept the cardinals away from one another, right? So it's hard for them to know each other, to trust each other, and then when it comes time to elect a pope, uh, it's going to be more difficult. Is Francis doing that on purpose? Don't know. Here at the end... One final paragraph from Demas II. Readers will quite reasonably ask why this text is anonymous. The answer should be evident from the tenor of today's Roman environment. Candor is not welcome, and its consequences can be unpleasant. And yet these thoughts could continue for many more paragraphs, noting especially the current pontificate's heavy dependence on the Society of Jesus, the recent problematic work of the Dicastery for the Doctrine of Faith, Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, Tucho, and the emergence of a small oligarchy of confidants with excessive influence within the Vatican, all despite synodality's decentralizing claims, among other things. Exactly because of these matters, the cautionary reflections noted here may be useful in the months ahead. It is hoped that this contribution will help guide much-needed conversations about the Vatican about what the Vatican should look like in the next pontificate, signed Demos II. And if you're just now joining us, Demos I was Cardinal Pell, who is now dead. May he rest in peace. This is yet another anonymous cardinal coming onto the scene and talking about the church. Well, today, but it's, it's called The Church Tomorrow, or I think it's Vatican Tomorrow is the title of it. Yeah, Vatican Tomorrow. What do you guys think? Who do you think this is? I am 99% sure who I who this is. 99. I I would I'm not a gambling man, but if I were a gambling man, I'd put down some money on it. Um uh, I'm pretty sure who this cardinal is by the way they talk and who they're citing and their concerns and all of that. Um I'm pretty sure Pope Francis, if he read this, and I'm sure he has, he and his advisors have probably figured out already 
who this is. I will say that I was somewhat surprised that Pell was Demas. I mean, not totally. I mean, it's basically comes down to about five or six Cardinals who would actually write something like this. And Pell was definitely in that number. But amongst that five, those five Cardinals now living right now, I think it's pretty obvious who this Cardinal is. So I'm going to jump into the comments and questions. I do have to run to first Friday mass, so I can't stay long, but I will do a couple questions and comments. Make sure you like the video. I appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're totally confused what's going on here, I'd encourage you to get my book, Infiltration. It will um, it'll give you the last 200 years of Catholic history, and you'll have a better grasp of why in the Catholic Church we have sex scandals, financial scandals, and then interior division and fighting amongst bishops, cardinals, even the Pope himself. So check it out, infiltration. All right. Nobody, I'm not seeing any up. Oh, okay, someone says, I think it's Cardinal Sarah. I'm not going to comment on this. Someone says it's Cardinal Mueller. I'm not going to comment on this. I think those are both good guesses. I think if you read it and then you read other things that have been issued in the last two years, you're going to figure it out. Uh, Raul says, Taylor Marshall, you need to be hired as an advisor to the Pope and have, you have great knowledge that should be shared at the back and God bless you. I mean, I'll put in my resume. Where do I send my resume? I'd be interested. Not that I'm the most holy man or the most prudent man, but, you know, and I think it's interesting. This year, we have seen the canceling of, well, in the last 12 months, we've seen the canceling of Bishop Strickland. We have seen hundreds of bishops resisting the Pope's issuance of fiducia supplicants on the blessing of same-sex couples. And now this, a cardinal issuing a public encyclical, public document saying there's problems with Pope Francis. Here's seven issues that need to be discussed. And already looking forward to the next conclave to elect the next Pope. This is, this has not happened for hundreds of years, if ever on some of these topics. Let's see. Burke, Cardinal Burke. So, so far you in the comments have said Cardinal Sarah, Cardinal Mueller, Cardinal Burke. There's probably two other options here. So, Joey Leva says the, the Holy Father will get a kick out of that comment. Yeah, definitely. People are saying don't support Catholic charities. I myself do not. And if you ask me, should you, I would say do your own research, but I would not do it. Cardinal Wick, or sorry, Cardinal Wick. John Wick is back. He says Cardinal Burke would use his name. He has little left to lose. That's actually a good point, John Wick. It's a good point, John Wick. Mm. Here is Al Go. Mr. Taylor, is there a fight against a culture of radicalism, extremism, as these lead humanity to self destruction? Thanks from the Philippines. Yeah, I mean, the world right now is in a tailspin. We are confused on what is a man. We are confused on what is a woman. We are confused on what is marriage. We are confused on what is a human person. Um, humanity, because of the internet, is more and more addicted and enslaved to pornography, to violence. And people are just, you know, they're just on the phone all the time. And people, people enjoy it, you know, and it's addictive. And never before have we been up against this. Uh, I'm worried about the next generation. They are, social media is so powerful. I mean, I'm a guy in social media. I feel the weight, the gravity of social media. And I'm a 45-year-old man. You know, how does an eight-year-old, their parents give them an iPhone, bad idea, give an eight-year-old an iPhone and like the way their brain is wired over the next 10 years from eight to 18 can you ever unravel that? 
All right, well, there's the document, Demos II. We're going to close up with a prayer here for Demos II. Cardinal, your eminence, whoever you are, we salute you. Thank you for taking bold action, for being encouraged, uh, being courageous. And uh, it's very encouraging to us lay people, the little people out here. It's very encouraging. So thank you. So we're going to pray Hail Mary for Demos II, that Cardinal, whoever he is. Oremus, nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in molieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et ora mortis nostre. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. If you want to learn how to pray the rosary in Latin, I have a whole free course on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in my name, Dr. Taylor Marshall, put in Latin rosary. I'll teach you how to pray all the prayers, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, the Fatima Prayer, everything in Latin. I also have English versions. If you want to learn more about the rosary, check out the free course I have on YouTube. Again, search my name and search the word rosary. And if you want to learn Latin and learn more about the Latin Mass, I encourage you to sign up at nsti.com, New St. Thomas Institute. I have 10 courses over there. We're finishing up winter enrollment. If you want to sign up as a student, you can get all 10 courses, including our Latin Mass and Roman Rite course. If you want to know the history of the Latin Mass, how to pray the Latin Mass, everything about the Latin Mass, I have a whole course designed for you, and you can sign up and get it at nsti.com. Check that out. If you want to move and find a place where you can get a traditional parish, traditional Catholic school, and you need to move, get the right agent to sell your house or to buy your house in a new place. Go to realestateforlife.org. They're sponsoring today's show, realestateforlife.org. And make sure you heard, told them you heard about it at the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. They have helped dozens and dozens and dozens of people in my audience to sell their home and to move to a place that is more in line with their faith and their values. Realestateforlife.org can be that for you. So check them out. That's who I trust. Thanks for watching. Pray your rosary every day or you're not on the team. Pray that rosary. Our Lady asks you to pray the rosary. Popes ask you to pray your rosary every day. Padre Pio asks you to pray the rosary every day. So just do it. No more excuses. Make Lent the time where you get to the rosary every day. Five decades. Pray the rosary every day or you're not on the team. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Happy Lent.